And what I realize is if I am truly going to change minds, I have to be willing to change minds. And there's three examples of this where I had to change my attitudes and beliefs. One was enlightening, one was kind of sad, and the other one was a little weird. The first one, when I managed an at-risk program, we had a motivational speaker come in who wanted to speak to our kids. He shared his story. He was in prison for about four or five years. He had a really tough childhood. And while in prison, he got his GED. So we had a GED component of our program. So he wanted to speak to the kids and say, hey, with a GED, you can still get a trade. You can still go to college. You can still be successful. He wanted to tell that story. Pretty cool, right? I was inspired by his story. So while he's talking, I interrupt him. And for you that don't know, I dropped out and I got my GED. I was a little knucklehead. So I interrupted him and I said, I got my GED too. Hey, I agree with you. I tell the kids all the time, if you get your GED, you can still be successful. I did it. And I still remember the look on his face. He looked disappointed. And under his breath, but loud enough that I could hear, he said, our GEDs are not the same. And it hit me, because I was just trying to connect, right? And I was like, wow, I don't, I don't. And I stayed after, after he left, I talked to my staff for a while. I was like, help me understand. I want to understand, like, what did he mean by that? And what I realized is the only thing that was similar was that piece of paper was GED. But his situation that he had to go through, where he got it, what it meant to be an ex-offender with a GED, we're trying to get a job, all of his experiences, our GEDs were not the same. But by me interjecting my story, I was trying to take his from him. I was making it about me. That wasn't empathy, and there's no way when doing that you can inspire a new perspective. It was like that aha moment. 